What you're seeing is a mock emergency that took place in November of 2007. We have two emergency trailers loaded with uh, barricades. The Edmond Police and Fire Departments, the Emergency Management Department, and various other City of Edmond entities converged for this exercise. They're going to have to stay upwind of the event. They're not going to be able to get close. Designed to simulate a dangerous railway chemical spill. Edmond has an emergency operations plan, which is a master plan covering all of our departments and, and, and our hazards, and it's, it's quite exhaustive. Uh, the plan really doesn't do us any good unless we practice the plan. So uh, uh, our initiatives and, and our plan into the next several years are to come up with different levels of training scenarios to deal with some of the potential hazards that, that, that we have. It just happened to be the scenario we, we practiced uh, uh, last time was a train derailment. So uh, if you practice the plan, you're going to be better prepared and more prepared to be effective when you have to respond to the real thing. And in this case, they did. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Nine months after the train derailment exercise, a real derailment occurred near Luther in which dangerous chemicals spilled and caught fire. Edmonds Emergency Management Department assisted in the response. I called upon some of the lessons learned from that, in, from that exercise and uh, started applying some of the, the nitty gritty details, um, trying to figure out how we can get the hazardous material list quickly. And, uh, that was a benefit from the exercise. We made uh, several uh, contacts, built some relationships with the railroad, and I called on one of them to provide us the hazardous materials list uh, so we could provide that from the Emergency Operations Center to the on-scene commander so he would know what he was dealing with. And we did that within a matter of minutes. A training exercise turned real. The Luther train derailment illustrates the effectiveness and importance of a robust emergency management department, such as Edmonds. Basically, it's a, a, a department that's uh, preparing for situations that we don't want to see happen. Uh, we measure our, our, our vulnerability, uh, gauge what our hazards are, and come up with plans in order to, to react to a situation that, that may come our way. One such potential situation is weather. The one that gets our attention a lot is severe weather. And we look at the different pieces of severe weather, uh, ice storms, tornadoes, flooding, drought. And we look at what the potential of that threat is and what the impact is. Tornadoes top Edmonds Emergency Management severe weather list, such as the deadly twister that touched down in Edmond in 1986. Ice storms are also a looming threat, as was experienced during 2007's winter storm. The Luther train derailment illustrates that not all potential hazards are natural events. We also look at the man-made disasters. Some of those are intentional. Uh, we typically think of those as terrorist acts. And some of them are unintentional, they're human accidents. We have a major interstate that comes uh, through town with I-35. The train tracks come very close to downtown and touch uh, Edmond from, from its north uh, border all the way through its south border. Uh, you don't know what's being transported along these uh, routes. Uh, we could have a, a derailment uh, with a chemical leak. Uh, we could have a derailment involving a fire. Uh, we could have an incident happen on the interstate uh, that, that would be similar. So we have to uh, understand that uh, these types of situations can happen here in Edmond and then have a plan uh, in place on how to effectively respond. When an emergency does occur in Edmond, this facility located beneath the city council chambers comes to life. The Emergency Operations Center is basically a uh, focal location for us to pay attention to the emergency and gather information, disseminate the information, and then make decisions if necessary. In short, it's the hub of Edmonds' emergency response. From here, emergency managers communicate with field personnel, such as firefighters or police officers. For example, during the Luther train wreck, our fire department responded. Uh, we were supporting the Luther fire department in their efforts in that situation, and we supported the whole incident from here with some logistics support. 
In an emergency, the Edmond Emergency Management Department will coordinate with other city departments to best respond to the situation. From fire and police to Edmond Electric, they coordinate and take full advantage of Edmond's resources to address a situation. Part of addressing an emergency is being prepared for it. In this area, the emergency management department plays a lead role. An example can be found with the installation and testing of new outdoor warning devices designed to alert residents who might be outside during an impending event. I would say that most of my time since I've been hired has been spent working on the outdoor warning system and updating it, providing more coverage for the citizens and, and getting us into the 21st century with technology and the way that we activate. The outdoor warning system consists of 35 sirens throughout the city. Resource specialist Buddy Hatchell spends a great deal of time testing and monitoring to make sure they're ready for the real thing. And I think having a plan puts a lot of people at ease. Another form of preparedness involves public education. Well, we go to the schools, for example, and talk to the kids. Uh, we have talked to some PTA organizations, parent-teacher organizations. Uh, we go to businesses and help them uh, prepare from a business perspective, but also help their employees prepare from a personal perspective. After an event, the Emergency Management Department works to assess what happened and how it has impacted the community. Damage assessment takes place after a significant event. Uh, the damage assessment initially, before the, if we had a tornado move through, our damage assessment gets sent to the National Weather Service and they use that information to help determine the size and, and severity of the tornado. When you hear about presidential declarations, those have only come about because local emergency managers have gathered up the damage data, uh, consolidated, in, consolidated it into a report package and provided that to the state. The state then turns and packages it up and provides it to the federal government. So a decision can be made at the federal level regarding the federal response. KC5RYT. This is KC5RYT. We had good sound, good rotation. In the midst of all this are not only the emergency management staff, but dedicated volunteers who care enough about their community to devote time and energy to keeping it safe. We focused on the community emergency response team. And it goes back to what I said before. We train, equip, and organize a group of people, in this case citizen volunteers, to respond to disasters and emergencies within their own home, within their own um, subdivision, their community, within their own business. In major incidents, the group also assists emergency managers both before, during, and after the event with logistics and manpower. And while volunteer response teams are a very hands-on way to help keep our community safe, there are simple things you can do right in your own home, such as registering your storm shelter. The storm shelter registration program is a program that basically puts your shelter on a map. That way if an event came and affected your neighborhood or, or your house, we could pull that data up, send it to the emergency responders, and they would come and check your shelter to make sure you had free access to get out and that everybody in your house was safe. In addition, you can also register for Code Red, a voice message service in which the city will call your phone should there be an emergency situation. Another service you may want to consider is Weather Watch. If you're planning a large outdoor event, simply let the emergency management department know and they'll alert you should there be inclement weather or other situations that might affect your event. Finally, it's always a good idea to have an all hazards radio which alerts you of any severe weather or other emergency event in your area. The City of Edmond will program them for you at no cost. If you buy an all hazards radio and you just don't know how to program it, all you got to do is call me and we'll set up an appointment and I will program your radio for you. Also, for businesses, schools, nursing homes, or similar facilities, the City of Edmond will provide the radio itself for free on the condition that your facility creates an emergency plan, which the City can also assist in developing. All of these services offered by the Emergency Management Department are common sense ways to improve safety for you and your community.
Edmond 911, what is your emergency? When you call 911 in Edmond, your call will go here to the Central Communications Department. Okay, I want you to stay on the phone with me. I'm going to transfer you through to IMSA, okay? And we've got lots of help on the way. Our department answers and responds to all emergency and non-emergency calls for the Edmond Police and Edmond Fire Department. We also answer volunteer fire calls for Oak Cliff and Deer Creek Fire Departments. And after hours and weekends and holidays, we take all the emergency public works calls for the city of Edmond. Christy works with a tight-knit group of emergency responders like Tony Strader. I would say every day we, you know, assist in saving a life. Um, if you call into 911 and you're having a heart attack, we're gonna use the most efficient and effective means possible to get you all the help you need immediately. Um, so, you know, that gives our employees a great feeling. Uh, there's a, a specific piece of the public safety service that they're responsible for, and that's from the point where a citizen calls for help to the point where we deploy a resource, whether it's police or fire. Uh, we work very closely with, with uh, both uh, departments. Uh, our mission is to provide effective public safety communication services as quickly as possible. While the department is designed to respond to emergencies, it might be important to understand how they define emergency. An emergency would be any situation where your life or life of a person that you know is in immediate danger. This could also include if their property was in immediate danger. If it's a crime in progress, you want to call 911 immediately. Um, if it's something that occurred yesterday or, you know, this morning, um, you know, call our non-emergency lines. Um, that way, you know, you're not tying up a 911 dispatcher that may be trying to take, you know, a true emergency call. But what happens if you accidentally dial 911? they accidentally call 911, the best thing is to first don't hang up the phone. Stay on the phone and explain to the dispatcher that it was just an accident or a misdial. And then the dispatcher is going to ask them to verify their name and address that shows up on our uh, computer screen. And the reason we do that, just to make sure we've got the right information in case in the future they do have an emergency when they call and they're not able to talk to us. From 911 to disaster response, the Edmond Emergency Management Department covers a wide array of services to help keep you safe. For more information about all emergency management services, go online to edmondok.com forward slash safety.